amend this bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Madam Speaker. I call the Honourable Penny Hinari. Tenawe, Madam Speaker. Thank you for this opportunity. Well, that's confirmed everything I believe of the former regime. And what that is, is turning a public service and a safety net such as the Ministry of Social Development into a tool to punishing beneficiaries, to punishing some of our most vulnerable people in this country. When somebody goes into the Ministry of Social Development, they have to form a trust because, let's face it, not many of them want to be there. In fact, if they had the choice, they wouldn't go there. But they go there because they need the safety net. So they go in there. They create, they create, they create a, a, a bond of trust with their case manager. A bond of trust with their case manager. And then when corrections come in without even fully understanding all of the complicated matters in this particular person's life, they sever that lifeline. They take away that security net. They punish them. And once again, this is what I continue to talk about with Whānau Water. Look at the family and not just the individual. Because you're not just punishing the individual, you are punishing the family. Children miss out. Loved ones miss out. Why? Because they are being punished. What we should be focusing on is how do we support these people better to make sure that they are able to fulfil their community sentence, where they are able to meet their obligations with the Ministry of Social Development and any other um, benefit that they might be receiving from the Ministry of Social Development. And as a former case manager, I can tell that side of the House, actually, you do that with trust. You do that with a bit of faith that actually people are wanting to do better for themselves. And a proper relationship with a case manager, whether they be from the Ministry of Social Development or, in fact, the um, parole officer or whoever it might be with the Department of Corrections, a more meaningful relationship actually will serve that person and the community better in the long run. I have no doubt about that. No doubt about that. We should be allowing these people actually to fulfil their sentences, not by punishing them or beating them or scaring them. Actually, we should be supporting them, supporting them, making sure that they have the tools to fulfil that sentence and also to meet their obligations. Madam Speaker, I mentioned the impact on families. Um, I know that many of the submitters didn't support this bill, and we know that um, quite a number of them actually highlighted the fact that it has um, uh, unintended consequences uh, that impact significantly on children. So we are saying now with this particular bill that the, um, the members promoted forward into the House that uh, we're going to be punishing those children. And we know how hard it is for many of the families out there, in particular in my electorate in Tāmaki Makaurau, uh, but I'm, I have no doubt in many electorates across the country uh, that families are struggling out there. And this is just another one of those um, one of those tools uh, to um, uh, beat families into submission, to actually uh, force many of uh, family members, and in including those who are penalised uh, through this particular bill, to actually go out and commit more crime, to be able to make sure that they can provide for their families. It's, uh, the data is out there that um, many uh, who find themselves in these situations and in, a, in times of hardship have gone to the Ministry of Social Development or, or, or have sought assistance and in the end, Madam Speaker, have actually resorted to crime to make sure that their family uh, or the individual themselves actually have what they need. And here is yet another tool to punish people. I accept, I accept that where there is continual uh, um, failure to comply, um, sure, we need to start looking at this a lot more closely. But I don't believe it's actually uh, in the form of, um, uh, of punishment or of punitive measures. I actually think it's more about making sure that we support these people more, uh, uh, more holistically, making sure that they're able to meet their obligations. It's nothing new. Whānau ought to um, talk about it, whānau-centred approach, um, a holistic approach to make sure that we, in, we have a good hard look at why these people aren't meeting their obligations and we deal with those issues. We don't simply punish them um, because of failure not to comply. Sure, once again I admit, if there's continual non-compliance, then we have got an issue. But instead of going in 
pre, uh, prior to the warnings to making sure that they actually have the support to achieve um, their community sentence, then by all means that's what we should be doing. That's exactly what we should be doing. And what we're actually requiring, uh, what we're asking now for our officials who deal with these matters and corrections and both the Ministry of Social Development, um, is actually to take a more <clears throat> human approach to it, a more human approach. And I talked about bonds of trust, um, whether you're in the Department of Corrections or, of course, uh, the Ministry of Social Development. That raises another question, actually the capacity to enforce. It's quite simple to say that the Department of Corrections can go in, instruct the Ministry of Social Development to do this, and it'll be done, and uh, we'll all go home happy, and the person whose uh, continual non-compliance will be punished uh, it's actually not as simple as that. It's not as simple as that. As a former case manager and a former service centre manager and a former uh, manager in work and income in the Ministry of Social Development, it isn't as easy as that. It's not as simple as going, gone. It's not like that. Uh, we know that there are steps in this bill to, to, um, uh, to uh, make sure that the person is compliant. Well, uh, in, an, in an ideal world, and as we read it in this legislation, that might be the case, but actually in a MSD and a Department of Corrections that are currently under the pump, under-resourced, understaffed, feeling the pressure of a, of a uh, explosion in prisoner numbers, uh, an explosion in the need for their services and the safety net that's provided to them, these people are struggling. It is, in fact, the challenge in front of this government to fix that. Why? Because as the, as the member across uh, on the other side just said it's now our problem. He acknowledges that they actually created it and now we're stuck with it. Now we're stuck with it. So our job then is to make sure that those people get the support they need to actually be, be uh, meaningful contributors in our communities, Madam Speaker. So I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed by the, this type of bill that comes to the House. Um, so. Also, um, the member who promoted the bill to the House to tonight also talked about stigma. Uh, and we want, I, I, I say uh, to the uh, member that actually having dealt with many of those people uh, who have come through the doors of MSD um, and also actually in corrections too in a former life, um, the stigma is just as big uh, there and, and outside of the prison as it is inside. The member tried to offer that only those who go inside, of course, the stigma is bigger. Well, I'd argue, actually, the stigma is just as big on the outside, just as big on the outside. And one of the problems with that is, of course, all that does is create more non-compliance. All that does is actually scare them into non, uh, more non-compliance, and it, not just for the individual, but also for their associates and the family members that they associate with that they associate with, and I'm really concerned about that. Any kind of bill that, um, that forces more non-compliance by stigma and by um, discrimination, I think is a poor bill. Um, and I just want to, um, in my final couple of minutes, Madam uh, Speaker, just want to talk about the discrimination. Um, we, many in this House, uh, know the numbers of uh, Māori who enter into the justice system, know the number of Māoris in prison, know also the number of Māori who receive um, assistance through the Ministry of Social Development. And we know, uh, and the evidence says, suggests it, uh, that discrimination by mere fact of numbers uh, of a particular ethnic group actually does exactly what I just talked about, about stigma. Stigma through discrimination. Uh, and that's a real problem. Uh, it will disproportionately affect Māori people. It will disproportionately affect uh, those in particular, I'd argue, uh, as a good member of Whutamaki Makoto, uh, in urban settings who actually have some rather complex needs. Rather complex needs. And um, we know that on this side of the House, actually, a more progressive thinking bill um, to actually assist these people in fulfilling their sentences and supporting them the way that we should be is something that would be uh, considered by this side of the House and by the government. But at the moment, this particular bill does not do that. So I'd encourage that side of the House actually to um, look into their hearts. Stop using legislation and the tools at uh, the dispense of government to actually punish our people and look at how we care for them better. Look at how we make stronger communities, stronger families and stronger individuals because at the moment a bill like this doesn't do that and in fact it punishes them and takes a punitive approach to what essentially is a human issue. 
Uh, so therefore, Madam Speaker, I say to you and to this House, we will not be supporting this bill. Madam Speaker, I call the Honourable Louise Upstone. Uh, Madam Speaker, I want to rise and stand in support of my uh, colleague, uh, Brett Hudson, in his member's bill.